Here's something that's very interesting. The social media revolution has a phenomenal transformative power that our chief equity strategist and economist John Blank says continues to reshape global communications. He's here with me now to explain this concept. John, all of the firms driving this, though, are publicly listed U.S. stocks. You think that's significant. Why is that significant to note this? Well, first of all, it speaks highly to the fact that the First Amendment uh, in the United States, the freedom of the press, has enshrined uh, the ability to transform our media and put it online and allow ourselves to converse via email, WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want to call it, and or what, however you want to do it. And this is uh, both the strength and the weakness of the United States. I mean, <coughs> we're now in a place where we have to think about these companies as being very big, dominant advertising generators in the United States, if not the dominant one. And they also are driving also a lot of worry, and, and it's palpable and it's true, the 2016 election with the Russian interference is just the latest example. We're going to get more of it, that politics – Political officials, voters, and people who want to influence people can game these things lots easier than television and radio could be gamed. So in the new social media world, targeting of anybody can be easily done for advertising, but can also be done for politics. And politics is a, in the Internet, can put you in a bubble. They, you click on stuff. People know what you click, you write on stuff, people know what you write, the algorithms feed you more of it, and you stay in your bubble. So are you viewing this as a good or a bad thing? I think it's a more of a bad thing than a good thing, um, because it's great to know that you can get targeted for advertising purposes and see things you want, but the politics, which drives uh, the things uh, in a more meaningful way than advertising, is... Is, is, is divisive and often fake and often just targeting you to give you whatever bias you have, some stroking. And that's not a great thing. So of all of the social media platforms out there, which are the companies that are most at the forefront of this revolution? Yeah, you know, you want your Pinterest, you want your Instagrams, your Facebooks, you know, your 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 uh, Twitches, your Slacks. I mean, the the names of these companies. If you just go ahead and and, and put out, you know, what what moves an in internet minute and to do Google, you'll you'll find out a ton of these groups. But those are the names you want to look out for, and basically everybody's involved in it at this point. And it's interesting to note also that we handle this power in this country very differently than they do in other countries, right? Right. I mean, China, for example, always groups and more like Dropbox and Git, GitHub and and all Reddit, all these groups are basically blocked in China. You don't get online in China and expect to have the same social media control that you have in the United States. They control it, and they also, for no, to no surprise, they don't get the rebellions. They also crack down. I mean, people providing false information on their internet that they get a hold of, they will arrest you. So you got to understand that these environments Internet environments, social media environments are are specific to the countries that regulate them, and different parts of the world are going to develop different ecosystems as a result of that. On a related topic, you also wrote recently that when it comes to Internet stocks, all that glitters is not gold. Why is that? Yeah, first of all, a lot of these stocks, I mean, Okta is a name I threw out there, you know, ticker OKTA. These stocks typically have... Uh, Margins at fifty percent, meaning they just double. They just double whatever they they cost them and, and charge people double it. And so they have incredibly high margins. But then, and they have the growth. But people um, tend to to think that okay, great, and these things are going to work forever. And then they they come in late to the party, and they basically get the distribution from the big players who bought them earlier and end up on the wrong end of this game. So my point here is, if you if you want to buy an internet stock, realize you're getting the short end of the stick at this point in time, and I would certainly wait for a pullback. Does that mean that Internet stocks in general are overbought right now? Yeah, I think so, Jerry. I mean, the bottom line is yes. And when you've got the weakness in the leading indicators right now, you've got a situation where the growth stocks will get sold in some uncertain way in the next few months, and you get a big, big pullback. These are names you want on your 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 lit watch list, but you don't want to be on it until they get, they get hammered, and they very well may do such, and we'll see a big correction, bigger here than anywhere else, and that's when you want to get out of them. So you are expecting a correction coming for these stocks going forward? 
The answer is yes, I am. And I'm, I'm not talking next year. I'm talking the next six months. Okay, interesting. Meantime, stocks on your watch list right now include Power Integrations Incorporated, Tenet Healthcare, and AquaVenture Holdings. Yeah, ticker POWI, Power Integrations. This is classic uh, you know, tech stock internet thing. It's actually a component supplier for high-performance electronic components and power conversion systems, TVs, PCs, appliances, smart utility meters, LED lights. So, yeah, this is the, to your typical, wow, this is a great wow stock. And, yeah, guess what? It's 90 bucks a share, and there's a value score of F, F, and the forward PE is 36. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Great stock, number one rank, and you certainly don't want to buy it right now. Then Tenant Healthcare. Tenant Healthcare. Now, this is a different one. This is basically a full-blown healthcare stock, hospital stock. And listen to this rally. Zach's value score of A, Zach's growth score of A, Zach's momentum score of A. So here is an example where you can get into the healthcare businesses when you can get a $31 stock with 11 or 12 forward PE. Much better situation. Take a look at Tenant Healthcare. What about AquaVenture Holdings? AquaVenture Holdings is probably almost certainly not a name you've ever heard, but the ticker explains everything. W-A-A-S, Water as a Service. And so this is a company that's in redefining water delivery. And its operating platform, because this is a company called Quench, which is a point-of-use filtered water system, and 7Cs, which is desalination and, and wastewater treatment. These, they're based in Tampa, so what, what, what you're looking at is, is the sophisticated delivery of filtered water to one group and then also treating uh, a, a fil- you know, water, wastewater, and desalination in another group. So this is, this is actually a growth business, and it's, it's a name you've probably never heard of, and their ticker, Water as a Service, WAAS, is telling you everything you want to know about this company. All right, that's the latest on what's going on with Internet stocks in the global markets and with our chief equity strategist and economist, John Blank. I'm Terry Ruffalo. And here's a reminder for our listeners of this podcast. For a limited time, you're invited to follow Zach's Market Insights, buys and sells from all of our recommendation portfolios. And you can do that in real time. Best thing is it only costs $1 to test drive it. You can even look into services that are so exclusive, they've been closed to new investors up to now. And for more details... All you need to do is visit zax.com slash promo. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.